Hello, and welcome to the presentation for TRAC, a library for provenance tracking and web-based visualizations. I am Zach Cutler, and this paper is work I do of Kieran Godov and Alexander Lex. So, why should we care about provenance tracking? Although it is gaining popularity, provenance is still rare to find actually implemented in a finished tool. Implementing provenance can take a lot of time and effort, so why? The obvious answer is for undo redo, which has always been a desirable feature for a tool empowering users and analysts to not fear making mistakes. Tracking provenance does indeed make implementing basic undo redo trivial and also makes full action recovery, including branch states that would not be recoverable with undo redo stacks, easy to access. But undo redo is just the tip of the iceberg of what can be achieved with provenance tracking. Reproducibility is a primary benefit, including recovering past sessions, as well as annotating or bookmarking nodes for later analysis. A visual history of our interactions becomes possible. The potential for collaboration, including asynchronous and synchronous collaboration, comes to exist. Logging of metadata can be useful for anyone trying to analyze their users, such as in a user study. Because of these benefits, web-based provenance tracking itself is not a novel idea. Some libraries allow for the implementation of undo redo, such as Redux or NGRX. Within the Viz community, there's recently been an increased focus on provenance, including a few tools that track provenance and examples of history visualizations. But most provenance tracking has still been ad hoc solutions created for specific tools. These solutions can be time consuming and naturally will likely lack some of the key benefits that provenance can provide. To remedy this, we created Track. Track is designed to be a lightweight modular library that is easy to integrate. It includes simple ways to share state with others or to store entire sessions to a server. Track also has a sister library, TrackViz, which is an optional addition that ensures visualizing and navigating through the provenance graph is easy. Track uses an efficient yet powerful storage model that I want to take a little bit more time to talk about. But first, let's talk about the history of provenance storage models. Here and his colleagues discussed the two common models used to create provenance. The first model is state-based, a simple solution which stores the entire state of an application at every node. This solution is fast, but naturally is also memory intensive to the point that it lacks real viability. The second solution, action-based, is more or less the inverse. State is never stored, only the function and the parameters required to go from one node to the next. This solves the storage size problem, but can be slow when jumping long distances in the graph since you iteratively need to touch every node in the sequence between your start and your destination. Additionally, and importantly, the stored data for action models is application dependent. Without knowledge of the application's functions, it is impossible to analyze. The hybrid solution occasionally stores states, sort of as checkpoints, and otherwise stores actions. This is a good compromise between speed and memory, but the output is still application dependent. A hybrid solution can also be more difficult to implement because to do so efficiently requires forward actions, backward actions, and sometimes rules for when to save the entire state. Instead, Track introduces a different model entirely, which we're calling the differential states model. Similar to the hybrid solution, we only occasionally store entire states. But between state nodes, instead of storing actions, we store diff nodes. For example, here, the first node stores the entire state. The next three nodes make small, individual changes to the state, and so only store the difference between their state and the previous state node. Eventually, enough of the state changes that it is worth storing the entire state again, and another state node is created. This model reduces the storage overhead of the state-based solution while ensuring constant time movement between nodes and easy-to-analyze exports. Notably, all this is abstracted away for the user unless they want to specify when a state node should be stored. As I mentioned earlier, Track has a sister library named TrackViz, which is used to visualize and navigate the graphs that Track creates. Here's a look at TrackViz from a tool created for a paper preprint. As you can see, icons for nodes are customizable, you can easily view branches, and you can also see annotations that have been added to certain nodes. Let's look at a simpler example. This one from a set of examples that we created to show users our recommended ways to use the library. In this basic ANSCEMS Quartet visualization, you can see that the system has grouped a series of nodes. Grouped nodes can be collapsed and opened on demand. This feature is intended to both help with scaling problems and to provide more unique functionality when desired. In this case, the grouped nodes are a series of what we call ephemeral nodes. 
Nodes which the developer labels as ephemeral are ignored on the typical undo redo chain, ensuring that developers can track actions like hovering a node or even basic mouse movements without undo redo doing unexpected things for the front end user. And of course, clicking on any node in the graph jumps to that node, updating the visualization. All right, now that we have an idea of how track works, I wanna return back to the primary motivations that we had when creating this library and talk about the specific features created to address them. First, persistence and sharing. Importing and exporting graphs is simple, requires no extra work, and is entirely JSON based, allowing you to create your own databases that stores provenance graphs and load them at any time. If you'd also like that part covered for you, there is built-in Google Firebase integration for easy storage to your project's Firebase. Finally, for quicker sharing, individual states of an application may be shared at any time through the URL. Track stores an encoded version of the current state in the URL, and anyone loading the same URL will load the stored state. This is for when you want to instantly show somebody else what you are looking at. All right, now on to analysis. This is the cool stuff for research purposes and where the design choices that we discussed earlier really bear fruit. We believe Track is a great tool for log file analysis as well as empirical or longitudinal studies. Track has been used for analysis purposes in two papers, one which presented at CHI 2019 and one preprint. In both cases, Track was used to conduct and record user studies. What you see here are timeline views from those user studies. This is made possible by Track's ability to store custom metadata at each node as well as by our differential states model, ensuring that the exported data is application independent. On the bigger picture, Revisit is a project that some friends of ours are working on, which is a tool entirely for analyzing user studies which use provenance. We are extremely excited about the potential to use Track with user studies and user analysis in general. Track is a library that we are still actively working on and hope to grow in a few areas in the near future. We want to allow for both asynchronous and synchronous collaboration. We also hope to keep improving our differential state strategy to take up as little memory as possible, as well as continue to create better integration with analysis tools so the developer has to do as little data wrangling as possible. Thank you all for coming. Track and TrackViz are currently published in NPM, and we hope to see many of you trying Track in the near future.